Niccolo Machiavelli. Probably one of the most highly acclaimed philosophers and political theorists of all time. Also one of my greatest influences and a figure that has been referenced, quoted and misunderstood like few. But before I initiate my attempt to scrutinize Machiavelli and his philosophy, I want to ask you a question. When somebody mentions the name Machiavelli or the terms Machiavellian and Machiavellianism, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? I assume that you think of words like dark triad, duplicity and manipulation, or in a broader context, the ability to gain power through deception, insincerity and abuse of power. Actually, those are all wrong. They do play a role in the way Machiavelli expressed his political theories, but they all fail to paint an accurate picture of the man. If there is a word that could accurately describe Machiavelli and his ideas, it is this. Pragmatism. He was probably the first political theorist that escaped the delusion of idealism and honestly proposed pragmatic solutions and interpretations of government. Apparently, his views were dramatically influenced by the time he lived in and his personal experiences, oftentimes exceeding the threshold of political correctness and blurring the lines between morally right and morally wrong. Nonetheless, they constitute a powerful compendium of knowledge that is shaping the interpretation of power and influence till this very day. Niccolo di Bernardo di Machiavelli was born in 1469 in Florence, Italy. His family was uh, descended from the old rulers of Tuscany and they have produced many members that were part of the government of the time. Back then Italy consisted of many city-states that were usually ruled by different houses. Florence was among the largest city-states in Europe and was considered one of the wealthiest and most successful. Part of the success should be attributed to the House of Medici, which was one of the strongest families of the time. The Medici controlled the Medici Bank, then Europe's largest bank, and this allowed them to expand their influence and strategic alliances. In 1494, after a popular revolt, the Medici were expulsed from power and Florence was restored to a republic. It was then that Machiavelli received his first government role as the person responsible for the production of official Florentine government documents. Machiavelli was part of a government that uh, wanted to liberate Florence from the Medici reign, but that was far from easy. The Medici had a strong alliance with the Pope and the recapture of Florence was a matter of time. Machiavelli's career was quite turbulent and ended sadly in 1512 when he was deprived of office after the Medici won a critical battle that helped them emerge to power once again. In 1513, the Medici accused Machiavelli of conspiracy against them and had him imprisoned and tortured. After denying involvement, he was released and decided to retire to his estate at San Andrea in Percuscina in order to devote himself to studying and writing. That's when he completed his seminal works, The Prince and Discourses, and that's when he gained his reputation as a great political theorist and a philosopher. When Machiavelli turned to the question of whether it is better for a prince to be loved or feared, he stated that while it would be wonderful for a leader to be both, he should eventually side with fear. Machiavelli suggests that human nature is somewhat ungrateful, fickle and dissembling. The prince, uh, or any person in power, is like the authority figure that substitutes the parent figure when a person enters adulthood. People in power will always have a huge responsibility towards their followers. This responsibility creates a form of dependency that urges people to keep craving more 
and uh, keep holding the prince accountable for most of their needs. Such an intense interplay damages most of the ability to cultivate self-reliance and people, instead of appreciating the prince's offerings, they usually become more ungrateful and keep asking for more. Therefore, a prince needs to resemble characteristics that don't allow others to question his authority. Such a characteristic is fear. Fear, although it still creates a dependency between the ruler and the people, it successfully prevents unwanted behavior stemming from lack of appreciation. The trick here is to ensure that fear doesn't really turn into hatred. Intense, cruel and unjustified demonstrations of fear can never keep people engaged. Fear needs to be subtly induced in a way that people can justify it. Events of punishment should be subject to convincing reasoning, for people will side with the most persuasive argument. In chapter 15 of The Prince, Machiavelli states the following. Men have uh, imagined republics and uh, principalities that never really existed at all. Yet, the way men live is so far removed from the way they ought to live that anyone who abandons what is for what should be pursues his downfall, rather his preservation. For the man who strives after goodness in all his acts is sure to come to ruin, since there are so many men who are not good. In this passage, Machiavelli exudes the totality of his pragmatic ideals. He exposes the reality of human nature and explains that being constantly nice will get you nowhere, because most people are not that nice. In short, he tries to explain that a prince should destroy the delusion that acting good will always favor him, but at the same time create the illusion that he's actually good for people respect goodness. In general, some personal characteristics will earn people praise, others condemnation. Courage, compassion, faith, craftiness and generosity number among the qualities that receive praise. Cowardice, cruelty, stubbornness and miserliness are usually met with condemnation. Ideally, a prince would possess all the qualities deemed good by others, but this expectation is unrealistic. A prince's first job is to safeguard the state, and Alice, harboring bad characteristics, is sometimes necessary for this end. The relationship between the prince and the people is quite a turbulent one. People demand actions, uh, but at the same time, they're not ready to react maturely to difficult situations. In order to understand the impact this dynamic has in the relationship, we need to work with an analogy. Think of a difficult romantic relationship you had. After the honeymoon phase, reality hits you hard, and most times, one of the parties will let their mask of sanity sleep. False expectations, neurotic reactions, unmet needs and increased familiarity will lead to friction and an inability to maintain a stable connection. Despite your more courageous attempts to be honest, your partner keeps reacting negatively to news that don't suit their liking. Your ability to communicate honest views decreases with time and inevitably you become dishonest in order to avoid conflict. In a romantic relationship, usually you have the luxury to live, but a prince doesn't wish to abandon his position. He decides to embrace dishonesty as the most effective weapon to deal with lack of conflict. People will almost always favor a delusional hope to a harsh truth. In chapters 6 to 9 of The Prince, Machiavelli explains what a prince needs to do after he acquires his position depending on the way he ascended to power. The overarching theme of this idea is that 
Loyalty needs to be constantly scrutinized and bought and resistance to be crushed. When it comes to loyalty, the people who decide to be on the prince's side will do so because they can benefit from him and not because they actually like him. They're bound to the prince and their loyalty is a matter of character and benefits. The prince needs to ensure that the rapacious and overly ambitious shouldn't be trusted and that the weak-spirited and grateful should be sought after and constantly praised. That is a subtle but great detail to identify. Overly ambitious people can't stay loyal for long. They are also thirsty for power and eventually will try and sabotage those above them. In contrast, people who are weak-spirited will always savor their relationship with the prince because it allows them to feel safe and that they belong to his tribe. When it comes to resistance, Machiavelli recognizes resistance as an omnipresent force. That is because people are naturally resistant to change and reform, especially people who benefited from the old order, who will resist fiercely. Princes who keep the old order around will inevitably need to keep fighting them, and that suggests a waste of time, resources and trust. Ergo, people who resist need to be crushed on a whim and fast so that the prince can focus on reassuring the followers of the strength of the new order and the benefits that will follow. In chapter 25, Machiavelli tries to conclude his ideas with a main strategy to be followed by countries and individuals in order to increase their chances of success. Free will versus determinism has always been a hot topic among thinkers. Machiavelli's stance on the matter is again very pragmatic. According to him, success is the point where preparation meets opportunity. A person cannot control the world, but he can definitely control most of his actions. Through foresight, people can shield themselves against misfortune and self-sabotage. Moreover, because time changes, a prince needs to adapt and embrace uh, malleable characteristics. On the whole, impetuosity surpasses caution and fortune favors energetic youth over cautious age. Machiavellian tactics and strategies might come across as quite caustic and even dangerous for some. For me, his works are invariably imbued with a sense of awe and they constitute a combustible body of knowledge. Actually, the prince is suggested in most political science programs around the world as a must read. This is not by accident. Those principles have been espoused and applied by the most successful political figures of our past and our present. Knowing and eventually understanding those principles can be a crucial step forwards in redressing the balance within ourselves and eventually within our political system. <laughs>